So over the years since the Twisted Metal TV show was announced, many people have asked me for my opinion on it, and usually I've said the same thing if I say anything at all. I will address it when there's something to address, because for a very long time all we knew was that it existed and also vague casting choices. Although it was funny, as soon as I saw the first major promotional image as well as the teaser trailer the next day, my first thought was, oh boy, I can't wait for a bunch of YouTubers to pretend to care about Twisted Metal for the next few months. I'm being facetious by the way, the more the merrier. This probably won't be an exceedingly long video because there really still isn't much to say, but here's the thing, at the moment I'm wary at best. As cool as it is to see Twisted Metal get its own TV adaptation, and definitely as cool as it's going to be to see these characters be brought to life in live action, I think this is a TV series that inherently has a lot working against it, and I have yet to really see any indication of the series proving me wrong. We live in an era where The Last of Us had a TV show adaptation, and it was basically peak television in my opinion. I was going to make a video on that one, but I kind of realized that by the time I would have gotten my opinions out, everybody would have inevitably moved on, and my opinion wouldn't have mattered wittily wong. It was an HBO drama epic that really captured what The Last of Us was about. It wasn't necessarily about fungus zombies, it was about the human condition in an impossible situation and what it means to love. Every type of media adaptation has its own strengths and weaknesses. The thing about a game is, you need to have gameplay, so a lot of games are hamstrung by the basic pacing of the video game structure. Outside of something like a Hideo Kojima production, you're not going to see many 20 minute cutscenes, whereas in a TV show, you're able to get an entire episode or two without having any major action scenes, so long as the characters and drama are compelling. You're able to have an entirely character and dialogue heavy situation without needing to break it up with token action scenes. And that's why, in many ways, Twisted Metal is a great example of something that can really only exist as a video game in its current form, because it's essentially all gameplay all the time. With a few exceptions, most Twisted Metal games don't really have much story to speak of outside of the opening and closing cutscenes. And that's how we liked it. It puts fun first and foremost. The issue is, it's really so entrenched in the identity of video game structure that it's going to be really hard to break away from that and adapt it into another medium without completely losing its identity. If it's not impossible, it's going to be really damn hard. So what exactly is the story's premise? Well, the premise is, in a post-apocalyptic wasteland, John Doe, amnesiac milkman played by Anthony Mackie, is tasked with carrying a mysterious package across the wasteland while being hounded by marauders at every turn. This is something I cocked my eye at when I first read about it. In theory, this is about as competent an adaptation as you could probably get based on the source material because each group of marauders could act as a different battle that the main character has to fight through with his souped up car. Each group and every episode could act as the next battle as you're playing through the game. Perhaps each group of marauders is being led by one major character, kind of like the faction system in Twisted Metal 2012. You could have an evangelical group led by Preacher, a motorcycle gang led by Mr. Grimm, a group of people in doll masks led by Dollface, and of course a group of clowns led by Sweet Tooth. I'm by no means giving them a definitive list of things they could or should use, I'm just spitballing potential examples. Plus, the mysterious package being delivered to an unknown person creates a level of intrigue in that we don't know exactly what he's delivering at this point. But we do know that theoretically everyone wants it, although the conflict doesn't necessarily revolve around the package, it could very well just be a MacGuffin that forces John Doe into enemy territory, which then forces him into conflict. Or it could be a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B, depending on the episode. So it could be interesting, but like I said, based on what we've seen, this could easily turn into another generic post-apocalyptic TV show with cars as the major gimmick. Especially when you take into account that at this point, we don't even know if there's going to be a tournament or not. And the tournament is one of the defining characteristics of Twisted Metal. So without it, I have reason to believe that the producers and writers didn't care about being accurate, or even attempting to be accurate. Once again, we don't know at this point because we haven't seen the series, but if we're at the point of teaser trailers and major factors haven't been introduced, well, what am I supposed to think? Then you also need to take into consideration that Twisted Metal as a series has never really been associated with the post-apocalypse all that much. But then again, I'm not going to say that it couldn't work or that they couldn't establish why exactly it's an apocalypse. 
I've heard that the God of War TV show is going to start with the Norse part of the overall series, and that disappointed me at first until I really got to thinking and realized that it would be really hard to adapt the Greek saga for similar reasons in that it's a very gameplay-oriented chunk of the story. So theoretically, if you start the story in kind of the middle of where the canon would end up and use flashbacks and exposition to establish how we got to the middle, it could work. So theoretically, this apocalypse could very well be the result of the Twisted Metal Tournament, and that's something we find out going through the story as they establish the lore, which might even be how John Doe lost his memory, and perhaps we could have a proper tournament at the end of the season, or that could be a potential season two. But, and I'm sure you're sick of hearing this, we don't know that yet, and it could be equally likely, if not more likely, that they chose the post-apocalypse as a setting because that was just what the creators felt made the most sense for this particular property when they did their research into it. If that's the case, that would demonstrate a fundamental misunderstanding of the source material. But hey, I'm all for creative liberty if it's something that plainly works better, and if they looked into the series, did a brainstorming meeting, and decided that it would be a much better told story if the setting was apocalyptic, and that comes across in the final product, then who am I to say any different? As far as the main character is concerned, I like Anthony Mackie, who most people will probably know best for his portrayal as the Falcon in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but choosing John Doe as the main character is an odd choice. For those of you who don't know, John Doe is a character from Twisted Metal Black who portrayed an FBI agent who infiltrated a doomsday cult and foils their plans. But really, that's his only major appearance, so in the grand scheme of the series, he's kind of an obscure character to base an entire TV series around. I'm not going to say it couldn't work, but the thing about John Doe as a character is, once you take away the whole infiltrating a doomsday cult thing, who even is he as a character? We only saw like 20 seconds of his character before he was killed by Calypso, which I guess means they're intending him as sort of a blank slate character that they can do whatever they want with, but he could really be anybody at that point. He could be Agent Stone, he could be Agent Shepard, he could be Granny Dread for all it matters. It doesn't help that John Doe is accompanied by an original character named Quiet, so they might as well be completely original characters. But Anthony Mackie is a good actor, so I expect him to bring a level of charisma to the performance that should elevate it beyond what will probably be a pretty blank slate character. But there is a good selection of other well-known characters that have been confirmed. Agent Stone, Agent Shepard, Miranda Watts, Raven, Carl and Jamie Roberts, Mr. Slam, and more. There seems to be a couple of other original characters which I'm pretty iffy about, but as long as they're interesting and don't pull a Cole Young on us, it should be fine. That is to say, is a spotlighted character who's as bland as a slice of toast. But if we can read the premise of the show and from that alone deduce that John Doe is basically just John Doe in name only, who's to say these characters won't end up being just that as well? Creatively though, I don't think the characters are necessarily going to be the biggest obstacle they run into. The issue inherently with an adaptation of this is the question of what exactly it means to be Twisted Metal. The series has encompassed so many tones and had so many different stories that it's really not easy to pin down what exactly it is that makes the series work. Telling the story of The Last of Us in TV form is easy, in theory, because you can just tell the story of The Last of Us game. Honestly, it probably shouldn't even be that hard to tell the God of War story in TV form because Kratos has a story to tell. But what exactly is the story of Twisted Metal? Well, it's never really attempted to have one, so it's harder to know exactly what to do in order to feel authentic. It's far too chaotic a franchise to narrow down a set series of rules and ideas. When it comes to the games, you have several aspects that can define it that are distinctly Twisted Metal. Throughout all of its iterations, the primary things that have always connected Twisted Metal outside of the interactive elements have been thus. Sweet Tooth, Calypso, and the Tournament. Throughout all the different games with wildly varying tones, presentations, and so on, these have been the few consistent elements. So far, we've seen one of those things, and for the record, getting Samoa Joe to play the body of Sweet Tooth in live action is brilliant. And why is that? He's fat! But beyond that, a lot of what makes this series what it is has to do with the tournament structure, the boss fights, the levels, the all-action, all-the-time style gameplay. How much of that can you retain while taking away the interactive element? What I mean is, based on the premise that we understand the series is working with, is it going to be Twisted Metal, or is it going to be a generic post-apocalyptic Mad Max-style story with Twisted Metal characters tokenly added into it that could be replaced by literally anything else? 
Is this a story that specifically needs the Twisted Metal branding to work, or is it just them taking an established IP and just using it to sell what would otherwise be an unremarkable experience? Well, to be honest, based on what we've seen, I've had no reason to believe that this is something that couldn't have been anything but Twisted Metal. Is it going to be a band of crazy weirdos in cars, or are they going to introduce the pseudo-sci-fi and fantastical elements, such as the Grim Reaper, living corpses, ghosts, Satan, and an all-seeing, all-powerful entity capable of twisting reality? These are all the things to consider. Once again, I don't think that you necessarily need to have all these elements in play in order to make the series good, but at what point do we cross the line from being twisted metal to being something that's just using twisted metal imagery, if you see what I mean? It doesn't help that Twisted Metal doesn't quite have the directorial pedigree of The Last of Us or God of War. It doesn't have a singular creative force manning the helm in the same way that Neil Druckmann mans the helm for The Last of Us or Cory Barlog, at least for most of the series, has manned the helm for God of War. Of course, there is David Jaffe, who was a major hand in making four of the eight games in the series, but that's only half the series, and even then, Twisted Metal 1 and 2 were utterly distinct from Twisted Metal Black and 2012. So even if we consider him the creative liaison for the series, his works have had such distinct tones and presentation that even he probably couldn't even give the series a hard set of rules to work off of. Let alone when you take into account the other half of the series that he had little to no creative input on. It's also worth mentioning that while Neil Druckmann is the creative lead behind The Last of Us as an entire entity, the show wouldn't have turned out so well had it not been for Craig Mazin, who's a higher up at HBO who happened to be a fan of the games. It remains to be seen if there's a higher up on the creative staff who's a fan of the source material and wants to do it justice in the same way that Craig Mazin wanted to do The Last of Us justice. Is it a case where it was made because somebody desperately wanted to make it, or is it a case of Sony just shelling out their intellectual property to the highest bidder and NBC Universal making do with whatever they could get? Did they hire a group of people who are fans of and understand the source material, or was it generally work for hire? These are all the questions that I have that have yet to be answered. Michael Jonathan Smith is noted at time of writing as being the main creative lead behind the series. There's not enough information for me to gauge how much of this whole ordeal is his doing, or if he shared duties with other people, and to what degree he may or may not have shared duties, but if he is the creative lead behind the series, I can definitely think of worse people to man the helm. His most notable work is Cobra Kai, which is a series that endeavors to revive a long-running dormant franchise in an interesting way that flips it on its head. If he can bring that sort of energy to the franchise, then that's definitely a good start. So long as he understands the material he's working with. It also helps that Cobra Kai is a comedy, and the Twisted Metal TV show has been described as a comedy as well. Hopefully that means dark comedy that still takes itself seriously like the first two games, and is not a straight-up goofy parody like the third and fourth games. Aside from not really being a fan of the comedy of the third and fourth games, that type of tone would also inherently clash with the setting. So basically, my conclusion based on everything we've seen so far and the information we have at hand at the moment is that there's a lot working against the Twisted Metal TV show. I'm not saying that none of this could work, I'm thinking that the TV show could absolutely work, but they've given me no reason to believe that it will at the moment. And the fact of the matter is, we're still in the part of the hype cycle where they need to be selling me on the series. The entire point of advertisements and whatnot is to get you excited, and if I'm iffy on the whole thing while they're only at the beginning stages of the proper hype cycle, well, I can't exactly blame myself for that. But with that said, I don't actually believe that I'm the primary demographic here looking at it. The Last of Us fans were absolutely the prime target for The Last of Us TV show, but the thing is, The Last of Us as a series has sold gangbusters over the years. There are millions of people who were going to instantly watch the TV show regardless of if it was good or bad. And then there's also the demographic of people who are going to watch it simply for the fact that it was a hyped HBO show. But Twisted Metal fans are kind of rare these days. This series has been dormant for so long and hasn't been a big deal for even longer. And so there really aren't that many straight-up Twisted Metal fans around anymore, so they're probably wanting to target a more general audience. So really, just based on the basic logic of how these things work, it's probably very likely that you're gonna get more out of this if you're not a fan than if you are a fan. So overall, my concern for this show is more or less twofold. Will it be good? And is this gonna be something that could only be made as a Twisted Metal show? 
I'm gonna be really disappointed if it just feels like a generic Mad Max ripoff with twisted metal imagery cynically plastered on because it's a vaguely recognizable IP. I'm not expecting Shakespeare here. My hopes for this TV show is that it's gonna be fun and action-packed with a compelling plot. Many of the best action movies of all time don't have particularly deep plots. Just a compelling hook, likable characters, and good execution. So I'm willing to give this series the benefit of the doubt for now, but if it ends up sucking, I will not hold back. That is a promise. But at the very least, there is one near guarantee with this series, and that is Sweet Tooth is gonna be cool as hell, because if nothing else, it would take a talented writer to make Sweet Tooth boring. So we can mostly count on him being a fun character, if nothing else. That's all I've got, so let me know what you think about the upcoming series in the comment section below. Are you looking forward to it? Are you dreading it? Sound off. And if you like what I do here, be sure to like this video, subscribe, and hit the notification icon so you're always up to date on what I'm doing. Because I'm not entirely convinced that YouTube isn't publishing my videos to people's subscription feeds. Otherwise, if you feel so inclined, you can support me via Patreon for unique perks and rewards, such as early access, Discord benefits, exclusive content, and more, like these fine folks right here. And an extra special thank you to FarmCat84, Brooklyn, D. Betch, Raf, Gaw004, Nicholas Pino, and Joseph Rosas for going above and beyond. Else wise than that, I've been the King of Snark Style right here on Tactical Bacon Productions, and I will see you next time. Peace!